here. You see that? This is where we walk by and we give the salams. This is facing the Prophet ﷺ. This is facing Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. This is facing Umar ibn al-Khattab. And there are at least, there's at least 10 feet, if not more, between us and the Prophet ﷺ as we stand here. And those who are inside, there's probably around 6 feet as well. So there's not that much difference. Where do they enter from this diagram? Where do they enter from? So the door that I showed you is this door over here. The door that I showed you is this door over here. Okay? This is the door that people enter from in the back. There's a door that people enter from in the back, and you can then enter the, uh, the, the outer uh, sanctuary, and this is the only place you can go. Nobody has been inside. You see, if you look as well, uh, if you look as well, you see this, this round structure over here? You see these dots? This is the outline of the green dome on top. This is the outline of the green dome on top. That is the outline over there. And this used to be a part of the Rawda, this area. But of course, with Qaitbai and uh, Baybaras expanding to include all of this, so there's an area of the Rawda that is not accessible anymore. And so many things happened over here. And that is why if you go over here and if you took the guided tour that some of our brothers did in Medina, they showed you some of these pillars. These are some of the great pillars of history that things happened over here. Why is it over here? Because there is a good space between the house of the Prophet ﷺ and these pillars. And because of the fires and because of the expansion, the Rawda, this used to be the Rawda in the time of the Umayyads, the Rawda has now simply been taken up by this space. And so much history also took place over here, but we cannot see it. But what we do see are the pillars that used to exist in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Those same pillars, of course not the exact same pillar, but the place of the pillars. They are called various names. So, for example, we have the, um, the, the pillar of Wufud, uh, the pillar of the tying up the tawbah, where Abu Lubaba tied himself up. All of this, you can find it in, uh, and you find it, if you look carefully, you will actually see it the names over there. In any case, our time has gone. But inshallah, I hope that this was unique. It was very different. I don't think anybody has explained this as far as I know in this manner. So inshallah ta'ala that you have benefited from this. And then in fact, we will continue our seerah with the election of Abu Bakr and whatnot next week inshallah ta'ala. And then after that, we'll continue with the mothers of the believers. Uh, any quick questions before, before we conclude? Because I know this was a unique topic. Quick questions, yes. Nobody would change the position of the body of the Prophet ﷺ out of respect. That's where he passed away, that is where he's going to be. So it, the utmost respect is given. And because there's no leader, so the one who would be leading them would pretend as if he's the one taking charge. And nobody is in charge right now. And so because of this, there was no alternative other than to just have everybody pray uh, Individually, one by one. Yes, go ahead. That green pen, that every time you should pray or the green what? Pen. Remember how? When was it made? When was it done? Eighteen thirties. It was blue once upon a time. Before that, before that, it was white. Before that, it was metallic. It's gone through five different colors. No, there's no religious significance to the green at all. Yes. So if you go from the backside behind, that's not the roda. And the left, the, the grail is on the left hand side. Yes, definitely, much more history is taking place there. But the mihrab of the Prophet is the same. That has not changed. And so all of that area is where all of these incidents we talk about took place. Okay. Yes, in the back, go ahead. The women are typically given maybe three or four rows for the rawda. So you have to go right to the very front of the women's section and you are given some of the rows over there of the rawda. In terms of the 
No, no, this, this, this is not the map of the road. This is the map of the Qabr of the Prophet there is, I can't show you here. This is not the map of the, the Rawda. This is a map of the Qabr of the Prophet It doesn't show you the Rawda at all. I have to give you another map for that. Okay? This is another history story altogether. He is, he is a slave who became the Khalifa, mashallah, tabarakallah. Literally, he was a slave from the Russian states, from Circassia, up north. And yeah, this is another chapter of history. And he became the Khalifa of the Muslims, Sultan Baybaras. And he was the one who built the masjid. Yes, go ahead. There was another hand raised? There was another hand raised? Go ahead. Same question. Same question. Final question, then we're done. Bismillah. The second one, is The what? Uh, the Prophet was not ever uh, disrobed. They did not disrobe him. Aisha explicitly said. Yes. Yes. On top of that, they put three suhuliya, three suhuliya garments. Yeah, on top of his clothes. Inshallah, with that, we conclude for today. We'll see you next Wednesday, inshallah. Bismillah.